alternative rock bands of the 90s are still some of my absolute favourites today and they're a massive part of my musical vocabulary. In this video I want to share what I think makes those bands so special and how I would write and play that sort of style. And to keep it super simple I'm just going to use these two pedals into a clean amp. Let's get into it. I, like most kids when they start playing guitar, started playing by listening to Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and actually kind of David Gilmour. I loved like how melodic his solos were and stuff in Comfortably Numb. But in my late teens and early 20s, when my music tastes really kind of changed and started to then solidify into still what I listen to now, I think both me and my band started to really take inspiration from this era and started making music of this kind of style. I didn't grow up then and I'm only looking back on it and I know obviously that can sometimes skew the actual reality of what was happening at the time. To me, within this alternative rock genre, it seems like you had really kind of indie bands like Sonic Youth and Pavement, but then you also had Shoegaze as well, where you had My Bloody Valentine, Ride, Slow Dive, Cocktoo Twins, that kind of stuff. And then at the same time, there was like the grunge movement going on with Nirvana and quite possibly the band that influenced us the most, the Smashing Pumpkins. But it's weird because these things were all happening at once and I believe they all kind of took ideas from each other and obviously just went their separate ways. From what I can see, this movement of like alternative rock bands was not only a departure from the like hair metal of the late 70s and 80s, but it was almost really against it, like the, the cleanness of those records from like the classic rock bands to the alternative rock bands is so different. The alternative rock bands, you know, the mistakes aren't necessarily taken out of the records where they would have been before in the other bands. There's definitely a few different guitar signature things that a lot of these bands were using. And the first I'd like to explore is the use of the open E string whilst you're playing riffs. And I think that really just taps into that thing of like, you don't have to be perfect and you can use that whilst you're playing riffs to kind of cover up mistakes and just to make stuff sound really thick and fat. I think what's really interesting is with this kind of open note, open E string playing alongside the riff, you can have different styles. Like the first I'd like to look at is what Sonic Youth would do. I mean, I think this is a little bit of a rip, but I've changed it a little bit because I don't want to get any copyright. To demonstrate all this today, and probably show you just how much I love the Smashing Pumpkins, I'm gonna use this blue strap. I actually swapped this for a Jazzmaster I had, because I had like a couple at the time, and I mean, I wish I could have kept them both, but didn't have the money to do that. Anyway, so I bought this Jazzmaster, and it was actually a sunburst color at the time. Weirdly, the paint was peeling off, I basically stripped it all off and then painted it in this like blue nitro and then we put it all back together and set it up. But the most important thing and the last thing I did to it was I put lace sensor pickups in it. And I think if you know anything about the Smashing Pumpkins, you'll know that Billy Corgan used to use a strap with lace sensor pickups and they are awesome. I'm going to be in standard tuning for this one, but I'm actually putting a capo on fret two so that when I play my open E string, it becomes an F sharp and then I've got an F sharp bar chord alongside it. And this is how it sounds. Okay, so that was what I think, like, with those open E's, which became an F-sharp with the capo, what a band like Sonic Youth would do. I think, like, I wish I knew more about music theory, but I don't. I kind of just do stuff from how I think stuff sounds, um, which probably sometimes isn't a bad thing, and especially for this kind of music, definitely isn't a bad thing. I think if you're trying to play in that kind of style, the pace is really good and then I was just using the plumes just on like a, a high drive 
setting that was just allowing it to kind of cut through. And it sounds a, like kind of you don't want it to sound that good. You don't want loads of body and stuff because those bands, their guitar sounds, I think, are so cool but I wouldn't say they're classically good. Now the next band, I mentioned it before, the Smashing Pumpkins. I think they do very similar stuff, but they do it in a slightly different way. The way I see it with the Smashing Pumpkins is a lot of the time when they're playing those kind of open E's or open D or whatever, basically the bottom string, whilst they're playing a riff under it, they're quite often then using the octave on the G string as well. So say it's an E, um, playing the E and then playing the E on that octave as well and then sliding up. I'd say like if you're going to write music yourself in this kind of genre then just pick like a an open tuning like like an E or a, a drop D or something and then just play around and hear different chords that fit in with that E root whilst you're just playing along. Anyway let's have a listen to this. I think you can have loads of fun playing with those kind of chord shapes and stuff and just moving around the neck and just making up something that sounds cool and then probably then going to other chords that don't have that bottom E and it will sound great. Right there I was just using a little bit of overdrive to just kind of show those shapes I guess but I think the most fun you can have with this kind of open note whilst playing riffs and stuff is if you chuck on a big muff pedal as well or any kind of type of fuzz you put that on and you really give it some and it sounds so cool like this That's kind of the first like signature part of this kind of alternative rock genre just those you know those those open notes while you go i would say just have a go at playing that around the neck and just keep that open ring in because a it's going to sound great and it's going to sound massive and also it's just going to cover up loads of mistakes you might make which i do all the time i think another kind of tip and something that you hear a lot in this kind of genre of music is the humble power chord, especially bands like Nirvana and the grunge bands, because I think, again, it's almost like a screw you to like the polished music that you had of like decades before. I mean, if you're just playing a power chord with like a DS1 or an overdrive completely dry, it's going to sound kind of gnarly, but it sounds really cool gnarly. Again, I think if you're playing those power chords, it's easy to fall into something that sounds very familiar because Nirvana and other bands like that use a lot of the chord progressions with that kind of like ratty sound that if you're just playing the same thing, it's going to sound like the same songs. But having said that, I think if you work your way up the scale... So you know kind of what rough key you're in. Maybe you want the open, like if you're going in drop D, maybe you want open D as a power chord to start with. And then just move around and hear if, hear if those chords are making up a pattern that seems really familiar, which 
this one probably kind of does. But this is just with an overdrive and then we'll stick a fuzz on and we'll hear how it rips. I'm sure you saw what I meant about that sounding maybe a little bit familiar. Anyway, moving on. I think having the power chords like that, just with the bar, is great and you can move stuff around. But one thing I noticed from playing like in my band and listening to music like that and then trying to kind of bring that into my own playing was that they're definitely using a lot of the sus2 chords, which is where you have the normal power chord and then you have the major, which would be that kind of stretch. And then you have the minor. But then one fret down from the minor is a suspended two. And I think chords just sound really cool when you move up and down the neck. Say if you come up with a progression that you think, hmm, maybe this does sound a bit familiar. If you chuck like a sus2 chord in, Maybe not even every chord, just mix it around and just play around with it. I think that maybe you can find something that then doesn't become too familiar. Having said that, I do think a lot of the Nirvana tracks and probably a lot of grunge stuff was using that sus2 chords because it just makes everything kind of sound somber. I think the fact that you're taking that major or minor out and just adding this kind of angsty, it's, it feels like nothing's ever resolving, but then that can make it sound really, really cool. Anyway, let's have a listen. listening to those bands so much in like I said my late teens and early 20s it really did kind of shape the music I make now and I definitely take aspects from those three kind of ideas and put it into my own stuff and also using that mixed up within songs I think can probably add a new element to it. The only other element I didn't mention was the shoegaze side of it. Now I wanted to keep this really simple and just use the overdrive and fuzz pedal so I didn't add any reverbs, chorus, delay and stuff. But I think especially in my band I'll kind of use drier sort of sounds as the like big sounds and then 
I'll add like shoegazier elements in as maybe lead parts and kind of soundscapes that go alongside a riff. And I think that's probably what helps it just not be those bands that I love. And it's a mixture of all of them. Maybe that's something to really bear in mind that like if you take something from one genre or subgenre and then kind of blend it with other stuff, then you can get something that maybe is new. I know that, for example, the Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corgan once said in an interview that they loved the sound of Black Sabbath. They wanted the like kind of hard guitar sounds of Black Sabbath, which is why I believe they first went for the Big Muff pedal. But at the same time, he loved Kevin Shields of My Bloody Valentine and loved the like ethereal reverbs and stuff that he was getting. So they kind of wanted to combine it and make this, I guess, well, it was grunge, but there's definitely in the Smashing Pumpkins, if you listen, elements of shoegaze in there. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful in some way. If you take anything away from it, it's just play around with those three different techniques and just try and make some chords and stuff and I think you'll come up with some really cool stuff. If you have liked this, please subscribe and drop a comment down below. Cheers.